It is time to go back to an oldie but a goodie challenge of the 24 hour reading challenge. How much can I read in 24 hours? We'll set the timer and we'll see what I can get through. Most of this challenge, I will be working on Timmy's TBR. I have quite a large Timmy's TBR and basically all the books I'll be reading are from that, except for one. I do have a buddy read that was planned after Timmy's was filmed. So this book did not make it on Timmy's and I am actually starting with that one. So I am buddy reading The Night That Ends With Fire by KX Song with quite a large collection of people over on Storygraph. Katie planned this. Rainy, Katie and I were going to do a buddy read and then it just escalated to quite a large group and I am going to get started on this today. It's a Mulan retelling and I am going to dive into this and I will chat with you when I reach about the 33% point. We'll see how long that takes with the timer. And then I can tell you more about this specific book because other than that it's a Mulan retelling, I don't really know the details of how they're taking the story and changing it to make it a new one. So I have reached the 33% point of The Night That Ends With Fire, which puts me at page 138 and the start of chapter 20. And I still have about 21 and a half hours left on this timer. So we haven't made that big of a dent, but I did want to talk to you about this book. In this book, we follow Mei Lin. And again, this is a Mulan retelling. So you're going to definitely know the general storyline of this book. Mei Lin's father is addicted to opium and he is definitely not the best with his addiction. It has caused him to be fairly abusive, to really not care about his family, and has now decided to basically sell off Mei Lin for a dowry. They bring in a matchmaker to match Mei Lin to a man who will become her husband. She does get matched to quite an older man and she's not going to be his first wife. He's had quite a few and they have all mysteriously died when they did not produce an heir. She does not love these options for her. Of course, why would she? They're awful options. She goes in the night to kind of see this man from afar. She can't meet him until the wedding, but she wants to kind of like spy and see who she's going to marry. She shows up and he is actually like beating a servant out in the street. And she's like, no, hard pass, hard pass. No, I'm not marrying this man. She goes back and she does have a stepmother at the house because her mother has passed away. And she tells her stepmother, like, I'm leaving. I cannot do this. I'm running away. And I'm running away to join the army. Her father was put in for the draft, but he obviously is too old and cannot do it because of his addiction. So she is going to take his place. She enters saying that she is the bastard son of this man. And she does enter the army. Sounds a lot like Mulan. Before she leaves, her stepmother does give her a necklace that was her mother's. And that does play quite a significant role in this book from what I can tell. A lot of people did not understand her mother and they assumed that she was actually starting to lose her mind. But it seems like the more that she has this necklace, the more she starts finding out about her mother and what was really going on at the time of her mother's passing. So Maylin enters the army. She goes by the name of Ren in the army because they have to think that she is a boy. And she starts to train with her squad. Her squad is under the reign of this commander who really does not like Maylin or Ren. And under also the seventh prince who definitely I think could be a love interest at some point in these books. We'll see kind of how it goes. I don't know how much of a romance is in here, but I could see that happening once he finds out who she is. He did meet her once when she was Mei Lin and he definitely liked her, but was disappointed when he found out she was getting married. So, you know, there's definitely the layout for that, but I don't know if it's in this book or not. 
I was really intrigued with the start of this book. It was definitely a feminist story, which you would expect from Mulan. It would be kind of hard to do a Mulan retelling without it being feminist. So that tracked. And I love a retelling. I love a feminist book. It was all going well. And then we joined the army. And ever since I have been a bit bored because for the next hundred pages, we have just been training. We aren't really moving the story forward a whole lot. We're just training, 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 training. And it's felt very repetitive. And it's lost my interest just a little bit. We have met one dragon. We did know there were dragons in this book. First of all, we have this fiery winged bird dragon on the cover, but also on the inside, on the hard cover, it does say, never trust a dragon. So I knew there were dragons in this book. We did meet one dragon already. I will say it was for very little amounts of time. I would like more of that. I want more of the magic system, more of the mythology that we're kind of using in this book. I want more of that. I want more of that. Less training. So hopefully we are now going to start moving forward with a bit more. I will keep you posted, but for right now, I'm very meh about this book, and I really hope the second and third parts of this book will really get me back and get me excited again, because at this point, it's not got in it what I want, and I'm just kind of a little bored, so I'm hoping it gets better from here. Okay, we are going to do a car update because I had to run to Sobeys and this was actually the quietest place for me to do this vlog update today because it's Saturday and my house is a zoo as it always is on a Saturday. So we're going to just do it here in the car. I am now on page 264 chapter 39 in this book and I will say it did pick up. It picked up quite a bit. There is a part two in this book and it picked up right before we got to that part two. The chapter before that, I was like, this is what I was waiting for. This is what I was looking for. This back information of what is her mission in this war? What is the reason she's here outside of just, you know, the obvious reasons of escaping her family? But what is this dragon going to do? How do Maylin and the dragon like fit together? I wanted all that information. I finally got it. And we have been working on that mission basically ever since. So thankfully, we're kind of away from the, you know, training of the mission. We're still seeing a lot of military stuff outside of that. But we are seeing a lot more of the magic and what is really going on in the meat and potatoes of this story. Finally, it took like 160 pages to get there, though, which is a long time, I think, to get there. It took a bit too long to get to the part of the story that I wanted. And even within that, there is a few times, especially during the military parts of this book, that my brain does start to want to check out. And I think it's because outside of our main character and the main prince, we do not have a lot of fleshed out side characters. The side characters that are around our main character, Maylin, are very one note. And that is definitely leading me to not be as interested in the military plot points of this book. When it's just her and the prince, I'm much more interested in this story. Now, at the point that I am now, we've actually just met another character. And I'm interested to see how that character starts to tie in with our main character. Because I do think this character is quite fleshed out as well. I think the prince character that I talked about in the first episode, update is really fleshed out. This new character is and our main character, 
but everybody else is just so one note. I won't talk much about this new character because we do not meet them until 250 pages into this book. And I think how they tie in is a little bit of a spoiler to the book. So I'm going to leave it there other than the fact that I think this character is interesting. I don't know if I'm going to like them. I don't know if I'm supposed to. I've just met them. But I'm intrigued to see how they kind of work with our main character. So I do think that this book has a very slow start. But once you get into it, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm interested now. It just took a while. I'm going to head back home and I may read more today or I may finish this book out tomorrow. Also, I forgot to check the timer when I got in the car, but I think I'm at around 19 hours left. I'll screenshot it and put it here, but I think I'm around 19 hours left. So we've, you know, got out of the 20s into the 19s. We're moving through the timer with this book and I'll chat with you when I finish it. Okay, I ate up the end of this book. I ate it up. I just devoured it. I enjoyed it. I cannot wait to find out what the sequel holds because there is still so much that I want to know. This book turned around so much as we went. It was such a slow start that I was like, mm, this is not what I wanted it to be. And it just grew and grew. And parts two and parts three are just so great. They're so great. I love what it was trying to say about the place of a woman in the society. I loved our main character trying to break out of that and say authentically, that's not me. That's not what I want to be and pushing forth from that. We also have two love interests. We definitely have a love triangle. It doesn't really show up much in this. We're definitely setting it up. But we can see it coming. We can see it happening. We can see who we're looking at. We can see it. There is one that I definitely am pulling for more than the other. I will let you decide on your own. So I'm not going to say who. But I have a favorite. If after you read this, you want to know who my favorite is, you can certainly ask me. Because I definitely have a favorite. The last page of this book even just got me. I won't talk about the conclusion. But it definitely had an air of history rewrites itself based off the victor and it doesn't necessarily line up with what actually happened and how history is sometimes written in a way to make it line up with the societal ways of things versus again what actually happened. I really liked this book. I'm gonna give it a four star. I think it could have gotten a higher rating had the first part of this not been so slow. The first 30 pages was really good, and then we had 100 pages that was just really, really slow. And then we dived into part two, and ever since then, I haven't looked back. I will be patiently awaiting the sequel. I know there is a sequel. Goodreads says there's a sequel. Also, the end of this book does have a big to-be-continued thing on the back of it. Here, I will show you. So therefore, sequel on the way. And I cannot wait to find out what happens next because especially since most of this book really had my interest and it was all through the middle to the end, I think we're just going to pick up with the parts of this book that I loved so much in the next one. I also do want to say that I think it did a pretty good job of sticking to the Milan retelling, especially if you read the author's note. It goes more to the original Mulan story versus the Disney version and I tend to enjoy that more and I even learned a lot from the author's note so I would recommend reading that as well. And I will say even though this didn't really stick to the Disney version necessarily completely it does have the vibes of the Disney version but it does go more to the other side of the story. I did really enjoy re-watching the Disney movie. I had to go back and re-watch it because it has been a while since I've watched Mulan and this made me just want to have a little nostalgic time. Now I have just under 17 hours left on this timer so we still have a lot to go, a lot of reading to do so let's pick up another book. I'm gonna leave fantasy for a second and head into a romance that is on Timmy's TBR that I need to read this month and that is Whiskey Business. This follows an actress. Her name is April. She's going back home to Scotland to help run her family's distillery business and meets the person who's running it now, who is the manager of the distillery. And his name is Mal. And they have to work together. Malcolm and April have to work together to save this distillery business. 
and obviously they have a romance. So I'm going to go read this now and I will check back with you probably at the 50% mark because I read romance a little bit faster than fantasy. So I'm now at 40% of Whiskey Business, which is the end of chapter 13, page 150. And I am just under 15 hours left on the timer. So I figured I'd come in and do a little quick update because I'm about to do dinner and go out for the night. So I'm not sure how much more reading I'm going to get to today. And I am really liking this story. So in this story, we start with April coming back to Scotland. She has just found out that her grandfather has passed away. Her grandparents basically raised her. Her mother was kind of flighty and was in and out of her life. So her grandparents really did raise April. She went to Hollywood to become a very famous actress and she succeeded in doing that. We do find out she's done movies with like Leonardo DiCaprio. Like she's top tier A-list. But something has happened that has put a wrench in her Hollywood plans. And I think it might be something a little bit untoward, but I don't really know the story yet. She has now gone home. Again, her grandfather has just passed away and she's between jobs and she's just decided to go home for a little while. She gets to the distillery that her grandfather did own and finds Malcolm there. Malcolm has been running the business and has actually been paying to own the place. However, her grandfather did not put this in the will, so April and Malcolm have to come to some agreements around the distillery. And at first, there's definitely some underlying tension with these two characters. First of all, they all grew up together on this very small Scottish island. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody's business. One of my favorite tropes is a small town, so I'm loving that. I love meeting her old friends that she grew up with, one of them being his sister, and just seeing all those things like intertwine into this book. She's a feisty character. She's sarcastic. She's strong. She is the sunshine and he is definitely the grumpy. Now Malcolm does have anxiety. There is a list of trigger warnings at the start of this book as well, that being one of them. And it is definitely leading to his grumpiness, all these changes that she's making, making him feel anxious. And also just having his plans change with him thinking he was going to be able to buy the business and now her showing up, there's some upheaval in his life. But they also have this underlying sexual tension and this underlying relationship from when they were children. They did not date, but they definitely were friends that could have potentially dated had she stuck around. These two have banter and I love when a romance has banter. So that is instantly making this be a winner for me. And honestly, it's what I wish In the Weeds was. In the Weeds by BK Borson is my least favorite of the Love Light Farm series. It's the only one I haven't given five stars. I have not read Business Casual yet, but it's the only one that I haven't given five stars of what I've read. And this is what I wanted it to be. He's kind of like Beckett in his grumpiness with his social anxiety. She is an influencer actress, just like Evie. And I wanted them to be this. So I'm really enjoying falling into this and reading it really quickly. And I'll probably just come back when I finish this because honestly, I think I'm going to fly through the second half of this book. It is a beautiful day out here. It is like 30 degrees and we have just been outside for most of the day because it has just been so beautiful. And we're soaking up one of these last summer days that happened to like pop up in the middle of fall. I just finished Whiskey Business, just. And I have just under 12 hours left on this timer. So we are officially over halfway through. I really hope you can hear me over the sound of birds and wind, but it's just going to be the ambiance for this vlog update. And I hope it doesn't sound horrible. I'll find out if it's horrible. I'll never vlog out here again, but we'll give it a try. I did finish Whiskey Business. I absolutely love Mal and April. 
I love these characters so much and I really did enjoy their romance. I really found them very sweet and their love really sweet. Now I will say that if you do not like pet names, I would probably steer clear of this book. He calls her princess at the beginning because he thinks she's an actress that like doesn't want to do the work. And then she turns into another type of princess and he uses it in a different way for the entirety of the book. So he rarely calls her by her name and really does use the pet name often. So if you are not a pet name kind of person, you probably wouldn't like this book. It would probably great on you. It worked for me. I did not mind it but I did want to let you know because I know some people don't love that in a book. The one thing I really loved about this book was the communication between our characters. I love communication. I also really like the anxiety representation in this book. That always makes me endeared to a romance when I see that, especially it being the male character. I feel like often it's the female character and I loved seeing it from Malcolm's perspective. All the conflict in this book is external. It's not with them once they get together. There's no third act breakup in this book. I always like to mention that because I know in romance that's so rare to find and it's always so fun when we find it. I'm gonna give this a four star. I really did enjoy it. It was a really fast read. It is the start of a series following the three McCabe brothers. Obviously we follow Mal in the first one and I believe we follow Callum in the second and Alistair in the third. The second one is coming out later this year, so I will definitely be picking that up. The third is not announced yet, but obviously that's the one we're going to follow. So I'm just figuring that out as I go, but I'm definitely going to be continuing with this series. I really did like the writing style and found the romance really just easy to devour. Now, I am going to move on to my next read today on B&K Book Club Sprints. It is time for the B&K Book Club, and we are reading a book that I chose and I'm very excited about, and that is The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. I adored the guest list. It's my favorite Lucy Foley. I did like the hunting party, and the Paris apartment was just okay. The Paris apartment was more of a traditional thriller where the other two are very much murder mysteries in like an Agatha Christie style fashion. And I prefer that for Lucy Foley. And I really hope that's what I'm going to get in this book. I will come back to you after being K Sprints tonight, probably actually tomorrow because we're going to end late and let you know how this is going for me and how much of the timer this takes up. <laughs> So I'm on Thursday Sprints and I just got to the 50% point of The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. I am loving this book. I'm having a great time. We are back to the Lucy Foley that I loved in the guest list. If you love the guest list, you will like this because it has the same vibes. It's the murder mystery and the style that we've come to expect from Lucy Foley, but the writing is the caliber of the guest list. That was one thing that I felt like was missing in the hunting party. That was a debut, so that is to be expected, that the writing was just not as high level as the guest list in this. The Paris apartment, the writing was as good, but the style was gone. So we are back to what I want from Lucy Foley in this book. This book is set at a high-end resort and it is their opening weekend. It's the first weekend they're open and they're having a bunch of prestigious guests come to the manor. And we follow multiple perspectives as we do with the Lucy Foley book through the weekend. And also now that the weekend is over, we do have two timelines. The current timeline of the weekend is over and there is a dead body. And the past timeline of the start of this grand opening weekend, which obviously ends with the dead body. We do not know who has died. We have no idea. And honestly, I don't expect to know until the end because that's also Lucy Foley's style is to not let you know who died. So you can't really necessarily figure out who did it because you don't know who died. We follow Eddie, who is the dishwasher at the restaurant of this resort. We follow Francesca, who is the owner of the resort, her husband, Owen, Bella, who is one of the resort patrons, and also DIY Walker, who is now trying to solve who murdered the person who has been murdered. We follow the two perspectives and also even a past timeline of one of our characters that I will leave for the book to tell you because I do think 
that is part of the mystery and it unfolding. I feel like there's not that much that I can talk about with this book because the whole point of a Lucy Foley book is that these people are together, these really integral characters, and you find out what one of them has a secret about that led to this moment. And it takes the unraveling of the entire book to figure that out. Now, I will say I was on sprints and I did get to a reveal fairly recently. I'd say about 30 pages ago, I got to a reveal about a couple of our characters. And that reveal I did not see coming. It was what I expect of Lucy Foley to just kind of smack me in the head with a reveal. And that's exactly what happened. But I am going to put this down probably for today, mostly because I need to get some editing done very badly. I must edit some videos. And then I also have Bones tonight, so that will probably be the end of my night is just watching Bones, so that's kind of what I'll be up to. I'm not sure if I said, but I have just under nine hours left on the timer, so I will be finishing this out tomorrow, most likely. I should be able to finish this. And then I think we're going to have time for at least one more book, maybe one and a tiny other one. We'll see how it goes. I have just finished The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley and I really did enjoy this book. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. Lucy Foley can weave together a timeline and a set of character perspectives in a way that other authors just do not do. It is so well plotted and so well thought out and you get these little reveals every little while that makes you understand how everything is connected. Now in this book, I don't think there's necessarily the big twist that we had at the end of the guest list of like, this is the big reveal. That didn't really happen in this book. It was more kind of slowly fed to us throughout the book, which I think will be better for a lot of people who didn't like the guest list. Because with the guest list, everything happened in the last like 30 pages. So a lot of people didn't push through and get to that point because they had a hard time getting there. I loved it, but I can understand that critique. Where with this one, you get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then eventually you can see how it all weaves together into this story. There was one reveal at the end that I definitely did not see, but most of them were kind of spoon fed to me throughout the book, which I don't mind that. I don't need a super twisty thriller as long as it's well plotted and well crafted. And I didn't really figure out anything before the author wanted me to know it. I figured it out when I was told. It just wasn't told in this big like twist moment. This is the writing style that I want from Lucy Foley. This is what I want a Lucy Foley book to be. This murder mystery vibe with these deep connections to these characters that we find out as we go along. I had a really great time with this and it is now my second favorite Lucy Foley to the guest list, but I could actually see a lot of people who maybe didn't love the guest list enjoying this, even though the style is very similar, just because of how you get more information earlier on in the book. Also, I think the characters in this are a little bit more lovable than the characters in the guest list. Not all of them, but there's definitely some characters that you're like rooting for from the beginning where the guest list, that's not necessarily the case. So I have just over six hours left on this timer. So let's get to another book. And the next book that I'm going to be reading is also from Timmy's TBR. And that is Witch of Wild Things by 
Raquel Vasquez Gilliand. This is a witchy contemporary romance, or at least that's my understanding from when I bought the book. It's a pretty quick read though. It's just over 100 pages. It's 104. So just 304 pages. This is going to be a pretty quick read. I will come back at about the 50% point to give you a little bit of update on my thoughts because I think it's not going to take me very long to read 150 pages. <laughs> to page 103 of Witch of the Wild Things and that is going to be the furthest I get through this book. This book is not a contemporary romance. It is definitely a contemporary fiction book with maybe a romance subplot and I really haven't even seen it yet and this book is only 200 more pages long. I actually wouldn't really know who the main love interest is if it wasn't on the back of the book. This book starts with Sage going home to her family. She hasn't been there in many, many years. And we do find that Sage has quite a tumultuous relationship with her sisters and her family. One of her sisters has passed away. There seems to be a little bit of a story behind that. And she is now being visited by her sister's ghost. She is obviously a witch and all of her sisters have power. So that is how she can commune with her sister. She has to find a way to help her sister move on. We do have the plant magic that I do love in this book and that was part that I did really enjoy. But all the family drama aspect of this book is just a lot. It, there's a lot going on that I really just didn't care about. Also our main character, I did not like our main character. She keeps harping on this relationship that she had when she was a teenager with what I think is going to be our love interest in this book based off the back of the book. And they were DMing each other when they were like 16. They did not have a romantic relationship. That was as far as it went. But she talks about it as like this big heartbreak of her life. She's in her 30s now and I think she's just kind of overanalyzing something that happened when she was a teenager. Yes, a heartbreak at 16 is a lot and it's hard when you are 16, but at 30, you would look back at that experience differently, or at least in my opinion, especially since they weren't actually together. They were never really together. There's really no characters in this book that I find redeeming or that I care enough about to continue with the story. So I'm just going to write this off as this is not a book for me. Also, it's really not a genre I normally read. If this was really contemporary romance, that is a genre I like, but this isn't. There may be a romance subplot, but that is the extent of the romance in this book. The fact that it says it's a swoon-worthy romance on the front of this book is just showing me how mismarketed it is. So I am just going to put it down and put it out as a book that is just not for me and move on to something different. I still have about four hours left on this timer, so I am going to dive into what my next read I had planned was, which was The Final Empire and Mistborn. My patrons and I are deciding to read through the entire Cosmere. I've been wanting to read Brandon Sanderson for a very, 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 very long time. And I really need to start Brandon Sanderson before I get to Brandon Sanderson in Wheel of Time. Like I cannot start there. So we are going to start Mistborn. I obviously will not finish Mistborn in four hours. This book is much too large to be read in four hours. So I am going to read four hours worth of Mistborn, come back, and I'll let you know kind of like my early thoughts of my very first Brandy Sandy novel. <music> I did it. It is two days later, but I have just finished this timer. It is done. It is finished. We have done it. I spent the last four hours of the timer or a little bit over four hours reading Mistborn. And I'm really enjoying this book. I don't think that's really a surprise. It is Brandon Sanderson. It's probably one of the better well-known Brandon Sanderson's. I mean, they're all very well-known, but like everybody kind of says, Mistborn, like they hold it to high regard. She is chunky though, because to get to the four hours of reading, I have read 32% of Mistborn 
So I still have a lot of this book to go. And I definitely feel that way coming to you with an update because there's definitely a lot that I don't know and a lot of people that I feel like I've just met, even though I'm almost 50% of the way through this book. But like it is the start of a fairly large series, two trilogies, and also the Cosmere as a whole. I do love Vin. I do love Kelsier. I do love this band of rebels that they are like assembling together. This is definitely a heist book. I have not read a lot of heist novels. The only one I can think of is The Lies of Locke Lamora, and I loved that book. I really did enjoy it. I think I gave it a four because the beginning is quite slow. But I am enjoying this quite a bit. I love the idea of them trying to pull off this heist from the Lord Emperor and to steal his kind of like build up of metal because obviously they want the metal. They're all allomancers of some kind. They're either mistings or they're misborn and they need the metal to do their magic. And they want to steal his surplus of metal. But also within that... They are trying to overthrow this emperor or this lord commander or whatever the heck he is. They're trying to overthrow him because he is evil. He's cruel. There's a large component of slaves in this society that we are going to try and free. And I love that there's also politics mixed in with the heist. You know I love political fantasy. So I love that that's like mixed together. I really do love this magic system. It's very interesting. And I'm still learning more and more about it as we go. And I'm just intrigued to continue. So I am going to end this vlog though because the timer is over and I will be finishing this up throughout the week. But that is the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed me reading for 24 hours. It took me about nine days, which is what I kind of expected from doing this challenge a couple of times before. If you made it to the end of this video but have nothing to chat with me down in the comments about, leave a clock or a timer emoji. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.